For many years, NASA has been on the cutting edge of America's space exploration as the agency attained remarkable feats that redefined human space exploration. With the help of the American government and a huge budget at her disposal, NASA has been able to provide high-level research, innovation, and discovery that has changed the face of the space industry. But things just got a lot juicier as NASA partners with Elon Musk's SpaceX to explore many more discoveries in space. Interestingly, it has started to pay off as NASA and SpaceX make a shocking discovery that would amaze you. Find out in this video what the discovery is and how NASA, Elon, and their partnership would pay off. Hi guys, welcome back to Glancy Tech, where we take you through all you need to know about the insane partnership of NASA with Elon Musk. NASA made a shocking discovery on Neptune with the Voyager probes that were launched in 1977, which later got to planet Neptune in 1989, 12 years after it was launched. The Voyager 1 and 2 probe has turned out to be a big win for NASA. The probes were initially designed to study the planets Jupiter, Saturn, the rings of Saturn, and also the two moons of the planet. After close studies on these planets, the Voyager has since then got to Neptune and beaming back amazing images to the Earth. But NASA discovered something shocking, a big and violent storm on the surface of planet Neptune. The storm was not anything NASA was expecting and thus were shocked at the discovery of the storm. Images from Voyager 2 suggested that the storm was in the southern hemisphere of the planet. The storm was moving at a very fast speed of 2,414 kilometers per hour and it was something that was very fast. The storm captured by Voyager was one of the strongest and fastest storms ever recorded in the solar system. The exact area the storm was discovered in the southern hemisphere used to be regarded by astronomers as the nice darkish spot. Another shocking discovery was the temperature of the planet. This is because scientists had always thought that the farther a planet is from the sun, the colder it expected to be. Interestingly, the planet Neptune was not as cold as they expected it to be. They found out the planet was even hotter than Uranus, even though it was very far away from the sun. So it was shocking to discover that the planet Neptune was a bit warmer than Uranus. Trying to measure the temperature of Neptune is not really easy compared to how we measure temperature on Earth. Measuring temperature on the Earth is straightforward. For example, on Earth, you can measure the temperature of the Earth by measuring that of a stable floor and using the temperature obtained to determine the worldwide average temperature. But this approach would not be possible to work on a planet like Mars where there are so many gases in the atmosphere. And so because of the gases in the atmosphere of Neptune, trying to figure the temperature just as it is done on Earth would practically be impossible. The temperature would have to be taken at an altitude. So how did NASA measure the temperature of Neptune? NASA used the Voyager 2 to take the temperature of the planet at a very high altitude, almost at the outermost layer, and only in this manner could they have gotten the temperature accurately. By taking the temperature at the outermost layer of the planet, the temperature was a lot hotter than Uranus. But considering that Uranus was closer to the sun compared to Neptune, the temperature should not be that hot for one major reason. The planet Neptune receives far less photovoltaic illumination from the sun because of the distance, and Uranus seems to receive more. The implication of this is that the planet Neptune emits more warmth than it receives from the solar system. But this may not suggest that the temperature of Neptune is uncommon. It could also suggest that probably the anomaly might be with Uranus, because other planets like like Jupiter and Saturn are known to emit extra warmth than they take in from the sun. As acknowledged earlier, the development of temperature as you go farther away from the sun follows this rule. Jupiter is the warmest of the fuel giants, followed by Saturn, then Neptune, then Uranus. This basically suggests that Uranus emits less warmth than the others, that Uranus generates less inner warmth. So you might be wondering, what is the inner warmth? It is defined as the warmth that is left over from the start of the photovoltaic system when these planets were formed. The warmth contracts out of the primitive photovoltaic nebula, forming an impact referred to as the Kelvin-Helmholtz contraction. The additional warmth supply on Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn are primarily a consequence of gravitational contraction. Because the planet slowly gravitationally contracts, the particles derived from the formation of this planet start to settle and fall inward. This process of cooling and settling converts the potential energy of the planet to heat energy, which is then released outwards out of the planet. So, the question is, why does Neptune produce warmth internally, however Uranus does not produce as much? 
According to Simon, a planetary scientist, Uranus is the only world that doesn't give off more heat from its core than it receives from the sun. While other gas giants are powered by their cores, Uranus radiates almost no excess heat into space. One reason for this could be due to an impact soon after the planet's formation. The planet's current sideways rotation, spinning at a 90 degree angle compared to the other planets in the solar system, already indicates a collision. The impact could also have carved out a portion of the core, leaving it with a lower temperature. With all of these discoveries, more questions have been raised requiring answers. To figure this out, a small group was formed called Conceptual Exploration Research, or CONEX. The group plans to launch a program called ARCANUM. ARCANUM is the inaugural CONEX mission consisting of an orbital deep space telescope Somerville and landing probe Bingham. The mission targets a highly eccentric Neptunian orbit for Somerville's destination and a soft landing on the moon Triton for the Bingham probe, with additional impact probes designed to shed light on the moon's subsurface of Neptune. It is an ambitious project that seeks to provide answers to questions raised so far. Its weight would be about 21 metric tons. The spacecraft would be four times heavier than the largest deep space probe to date, which is NASA and ESA's cassini hygens mission, which explored Saturn from 2004 to 2017. Arcanum would have numerous components, including an orbiter to study Neptune, a lander to study Triton, and a penetrator to strike Triton's surface and perform a seismic experiment to understand its geology and its structure. The mission could also be equipped with a telescope, allowing for studies of the outer solar system and aiding the hunt for planets around other stars. But considering the size of this spacecraft and the complexities involved, it would need a heavy rocket for its launch. But unfortunately, such rockets do not exist. And this is where Elon Musk comes in. Elon Musk's Starship would no doubt be useful for this project. It is the largest spaceship ever produced by any man. Elon Musk intends to use it for his deep space exploration, particularly Mars colonization. But it has been speculated that the spaceship could be used for deeper space exploration, such as exploration to Neptune. Starship, which is being built at a Texas site dubbed Star Base, consists of a giant space ship on top of a large booster known as Super Heavy. Both can land back on Earth so they can be reused, reducing costs. The entire vehicle will be capable of lifting 100 metric tons, or 220,000 pounds, of cargo and people into space on regular low-cost missions. The volume of usable space within Starship is a whopping 1,000 cubic meters, big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower disassembled. And that's got NASA and other scientists excited. The Star Starship rocket is advanced and reusable and thus suitable for missions such as this because it is fully reusable. The idea of fueling has made the rocket more preferred than any other rocket in existence. Elon has proposed a depot filling station on another planet to make this journey to Neptune a reality. Since a Mars colonization is in view, this could be a possibility and would be interesting to see how it plays out. So with this in view, NASA can hope to send the rocket to Neptune to study the planet and bring back rock samples to the Earth, a project that would seem remarkable considering the distance involved. NASA's partnership with Elon Musk would make this project a reality, allowing humanity to study our planetary system in a way that would open us up to more realities. So what do you think about the NASA and Elon Musk partnership? Let me get your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. If you found this video entertaining and enlightening, I want you to like, share, and push the subscribe button for more updates from Glancy Tech.